In this video, I will show you how to draw this street view in two points perspective. So to begin, here I'm going to start by drawing out the picture plane for the image that we are drawing. Now, usually I don't do this, but because I'm drawing a full scene here, you know, this could be the size of the entire page if I wanted. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to capture it all on camera. So that's why I've created this, which is uh, essentially the frame, right? And we will be drawing within this. With that being said, I'm still going to extend all of my construction lines to the edges of the paper that I'm drawing on. So here, for instance, I establish the position of the horizon line. And in this example, you can see that it crosses the plane a little lower than halfway. And of course, this horizon line is our eye level and I also extend it to the edges of the page. So I suppose it's useful having this picture plane here because it lets you also see exactly where I place my horizon line in relation to that. Now the next step is to position some vanishing points and for this drawing we'll have two of them, one to the left and one to the right, seen as this is being drawn in two points perspective. Now how I position these is dictated by the converging lines of a box that I will start to construct now. So to do this, here I start by drawing a vertical line around here and this will be the front corner edge of a box and you can see whereabouts and, and how far this crosses the horizon line. From the bottom of this, I take a line to what will be the left vanishing point. In this case, the left vanishing point will be right on the edge of that picture plane where it comes in contact with the horizon line, which is convenient because it means I can reach it with my ruler. So now all of my lines heading in this direction, like the one I'm drawing from the top of this, now have to extend to this same point. And remember, these vanishing points when drawing in two points perspective will always exist on the horizon line. I'll now add another vertical line to the back for that back edge of the box. So that's one plane of this box we are constructing now drawn out and now it's time to place the right vanishing point and this one will be a lot further away off the page and I know this because here this one is very close to the centre of our drawing. And these are the things that you pick up from experience, so don't worry if you don't understand some of this, but now you can see here how this line is on much less of an angle as it extends to that horizon line. And at some point to the far right, this will eventually come in contact with the horizon line, and that will be where my right vanishing point is. Now because it's so far away, we have to estimate the direction of our lines and judge the angle of them to try and have them all heading to that same point, that right vanishing point. And there's a few things that can help us do this. For instance, you can see as I draw in this line at the top that this angles downwards to the edge of the page heading to that far away point. Because our vanishing points exist on the horizon line, then lines above will angle down to the vanishing points and lines below will angle upwards. So again, here I add another vertical line to the side to close off this plane. So currently I have a half constructed box. I've established the level of the horizon line and also positioned the vanishing points. Now to finish constructing this box, I'm going to take some lines back to the vanishing points from each corner like so and where these sets of lines cross at the back will be where I can then draw in another vertical line for that back edge and this finishes this box. So if you haven't guessed yet this box will be one of the buildings in this drawing and so now I'm going to add a pitched roof onto this and, and to do this is fairly simple. I start by dividing up the front plane of the box like so, taking a line to each opposite corner and at the centre where these cross I can draw in a vertical halfway line. Now I also extend this up past the top of the box and the end of this line will be the top of the roof at the ridge so you, you can make this as high as you want and that will dictate how steep the pitch on your roof is. I'm going to have this end around here and so now from the top of this I will take a line back to that left vanishing point and now I also divide up that plane at the back of the box the same way and I draw in the same vertical halfway line in the centre and I extend this up until it meets that converging line. 
At this stage I can now connect the top of these vertical lines with the corners of the box to create two triangles at either end and finish constructing this pitched roof. So now this is looking more like a house but again we are drawing a street view so it's safe to assume there'll be more than one of them. We are essentially going to repeat what we had just done to draw this next house except it's going to be on a different angle. So what does that mean? Well, it, it means that the vanishing points are in different positions on the horizon line. And uh, I know we've just set up these vanishing points, but as objects rotate in perspective, their vanishing points move along the horizon line if they are on the same ground plane. So let's go through this again and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to start by drawing a vertical line for the front corner edge of this new box and start to position a right vanishing point. Now try and ignore all of the previous construction lines from the other house that we've just drawn here. You can see how this line from the bottom of this edge here is on a steeper angle this time heading up towards the horizon line and although this will again meet the horizon line off the page it's not too far off the page this time. I can still reach it with my ruler which makes life easier. So here I'll draw another line from the top of this to this point as well. I can then add a vertical line between this to finish that plane. Now for the left vanishing point, for this box it's going to be a lot further away this time. Usually if, if one of the vanishing points is close to the centre of the drawing it means the other will be far away. This is explained in, in more technical videos that I've made on subjects such as the cone of vision for instance. Anyways, I have to do the same here and judge the direction of my lines. Here I also extend one from the top in that direction and I can finish this by closing off this plane with another vertical line. Now again, I do the same as before and extend some lines back to each vanishing point from the corners of this box or the top and bottom of these new vertical lines that I've just drawn. And where these cross is where I draw in that back edge for this box. Okay, so again I'm going to add a pitched roof to this one and to do this I find the centre by taking some diagonal lines to each corner like so and I then draw in that vertical halfway line extending this up to a height that I'm happy with for the pitched roof. Here I divide up the back plane of that box the same way and now I take a line from the top of this back to that right vanishing point. I didn't do this in the same order as last time but it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll still extend up a vertical line at the back here to this and then I can take some lines from the top of these back to the corners of the box drawing two triangles and finishing this pitched roof. Okay, so now we have two very basic houses drawn out and placed in two points perspective. Because these vanishing points for both of these exist on the same horizon line, it means that these are both on the same ground plane. Anyways, the next step is to start constructing some other sections. Here to the left, I'll add a simple vertical line like so because this is going to be one wall up close. And now to the right, in front of this first building we had drawn, I'm going to construct a wall. So I start by extending a line from the bottom of this first house. And this will be the first line of this wall that I'm drawing. And so slightly along this line, away from the building here, I draw up a vertical line for the height of this wall. And from the top of this, I can extend a line out from the left vanishing point. The one we had used to construct this first box, like so. At the corner, close to the building, I also draw a line back to that right vanishing point. Again, because this wall is in a line with the first building that I'm drawing, this is using the same vanishing point. So, I'll leave that like that for now and start drawing a path in front of this. At the corner of the building up here, I'll draw a line extending out a little for the path and then use the left vanishing point again to bring it back down here. At the far end, I also draw a line that is on the same angle as the rotated box, and it appears as if there is a street between these buildings we had drawn here, so I'm drawing a path to indicate that. Around the bottom of this rotated building, I also offset some lines for the, the path up here, and finally we'll see a, a section of the path to the left here, next to this section of wall. So that's some of the surrounding environment drawn out, now I'm going to spend some time developing these houses we've drawn and I'll start by adding some overhanging roofs onto these. 
Let's start with this one and to start doing this I firstly decide how far I want to overhang the roof at the front here and extend this line out to where I want it to end. Around here looks good and so I do the same at the top. Now I can join these up drawing a line at the same angle as the roof and, and I'll make the overhang slightly smaller actually and push this back. Now you want to do this on the side that you'll see under and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Here I just extend the line at the other side and connect this up as well like so. So what I mean was that from this angle in perspective we would see the underside of that first part of the overhanging roof I had drawn and that's why I had drawn that in first. I just find it easier to start with that side whenever I do this. I also extend out the back here as well but I make sure to bring my lines closer in to account for the foreshortening. So now I will add some thickness to this roof and to do this I start by taking a line up from the ridge here and down at the side I'll extend out another line and this one should be perpendicular to the angled line for the roof. Here I then join these up and do the same at the other side. Now for the ends of those shorter lines I can take some lines back in perspective to the other end of the building. Like at the top of this ridge for instance, I, I can take a line back and then I can easily connect this up at the back as well. And that is our three dimensional overhanging pitched roof. Now I'm also going to do the same on the other house, so I'll let this play out in a time lapse and you can see how this is done the same way. So now I have a roof drawn out on both of these buildings but they are also missing some doors and windows so I'll draw them in a moment. I'll put this footage into a time lapse now and you can see how I develop this. I want this street to look rather old fashioned so I'm going to use some features that are often seen on medieval buildings. I also got distracted and I added some thickness to this wall and, and then I started to draw in the chimney, the kebs for the path and so at this stage I'm just looking around trying to draw everything in before I put aside the ruler. Eventually I then start to outline some windows and I draw these details freehand but I'm still able to judge the convergence of my lines thanks to the existing construction lines. And the same goes for most of what I draw now, it's a lot more accurate thanks to this underlying construction of this street view. So I'll let this play out in a time lapse up to the rendering stage. Okay so now I've finished outlining the drawing and I'm going to render this in pencil. As always this stage is best viewed in a time lapse so I'll do that and it's really just a, a self explanatory process now. You'll be able to see how I do this by studying the footage on screen so with that being said I'll let this play up until the end and then we can see how this turns out.
Okay, so now I have finished rendering this drawing and I like how this one has turned out. I hope that you like it too and found this tutorial helpful. I have many more perspective drawing tutorials on the channel like this, so be sure to check them out. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.